Good morning. This is Pamela Bluewater for J&S Biblical Productions. We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the old city of Jerusalem. We are about to have a special interview with Jesus to ask some personal questions that many people have wanted to know for centuries. Here he is in spirit, Jesus. I welcome you to J&S Biblical. Thank you. My first question is, why did you choose fishermen for disciples instead of trained church leaders or carpenters like yourself? I wanted fishers of men, and I told them so. The church leaders of the time, the Pharisees, and different qualities and faults. They, I wanted my disciples to be fishing, fishing for people. I got this inspiration or command, you might say, from the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 16, when he spoke that the Lord will restore the land to the Israelites that he gave their forefathers. He said these exact words in verse 16. Quote, but now I will send for many fishermen and they will catch them. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Um, now, can you uh, summarize some of these main themes uh, like the main themes that you taught during your ministry? I would say that there's many themes. Salvation, following the Lord's work. Though I would say that what's written in Matthew 22, 38, and 39, quote, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, in verse 39, and the second, it's like, like it, quote, love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you can't love yourself, how can you love anyone else? Though I would add another, that in Matthew, um, what is it, 6, verse 14 and 15, yes. For if you forgiven men, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And 15, but if you do not forgive men their, and their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is important. I said this on the Sermon of the Mount. All right, we should be able to remember those items. I do have another popular question. As your disciples wrote for you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Peter, and Paul, why didn't you write anything down for future generations to memorize and to learn? It's a good question. I was in Galilee, and my native tongue was Aramaic. There were so many languages out there. What language would I write in? Greek, Roman, Chinese? It might as well be the Tower of Babel. I want people everywhere to learn and know what I said. And so it's up to my disciples to go about and, and speak their truths and write their gospels. And so I trust in the oral tradition. See, when Luke wrote this parable, he called it the parable of the fig tree. And it describes that when your leaves sprout, you can see the summer is near. And in verse, uh, what is it, chapter 21, verse 33, he said, quote, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And I was sitting on the Mount of Olives and I said these exact words to my disciples and these words continue to reverberate on and on to this very day, just as it is related in Matthew 24, 35. And I believe that it is true. So that at the time, I didn't have to write it down. It's, it's up to my disciples to carry that word on. I have very personal questions that many writers and scholars have been asking for centuries. The main one is, did you marry <laughs> Mary Magdalene? Yes. I understand this question has produced a, f a wide array of, of speculation, of pseudographers who've chosen to make money sensationalizing this holy, holy bond that both she and I had. You know, I would say that in her defense that she was not the reputant prostitute or woman of the streets that Luke had described 
or you know, in 736 through 50 at one of the Pharisees' house at dinner when she came to my feet. Instead, the truth is that she's from the small town of Magdala on the Sea of Galilee, just as I was there. And it was known for its fishing, and she was such a devoted disciple. It's, it's, uh, it's true. In fact, she was just as loyal as any male disciple. Though I would say that at the time, I was a Raboni. It was not forbidden for me to marry. And at the time, socially, I spoke with her in confidence, meaning in privacy. And that wasn't something that you did with just any woman. So I'll leave it for you to, to uh, decipher yourself. So I can certainly understand those jealousies, though from my other disciples, that is, as to why I would favor her so. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us the time to speak with you about such spiritual and intimate matters. This is Pamela Bluewater for J&S. Wait. Sank. I'm the receptionist for J&S Bookwell Productions, and I have to agree with Jesus about Mary Magdalene. She was only mentioned in the Bible one time by the Gospel writer John, for attending his crucifixion and seeing his empty tomb. And if he had married Mary Magdalene, then the other gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke would have said something about it. And the apostles, Peter and Paul, who knew him best, would have, who also wrote about his life, would have said something about it. Paul was the author of 13 of the 26 books in the New Testament. So there. By the way, what is this church we're standing in? Everywhere is a church. <laughs> Though this is the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. It was built by the Roman Emperor Constantine I, and it was finished in 335 AD, and was allegedly built over the very site of my crucifixion in the old city of Jerusalem. It's incredible. I mean, so beautiful. All right, well, thank you, Jesus, for the tour and all the facts that you can tell us. For our viewers, you can visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Saturday, Sunday till 8 p.m. In the winter, October to March, it is open from 4 a.m. to 7 p.m., and it's free of charge. This is Pamela Bluewater for J&S Biblical saying, good morning. What are your thoughts on today's story? We'd like to know. So leave a comment and subscribe to our channel, JNS Authentic Biblical Productions. Whether it's the word of God through parables, true stories illustrating parables, or true stories in the life of Jesus Christ with commentary, you can see them all by subscribing to the most comprehensive collection of videos of biblical stories for you and your family. Have a blessed day.